she was, her, her leg would have been hanging off for an operation that serious. Well, she wasn't. She told me she hurt her ankle, her shin. And she went in that car, even though I was told that she would have had to gone in an ambulance. See, that says the 28th of May, 2018 at 4.01, the day that they say that my mum died in the hospital. They say that she died at 4.15, but, and I was there uh, with her on the 24th, and she didn't die on the 28th. Um, because I was in my field on the 28th, building that air vent on the back of my polytunnel. And if you watch my videos, a lot of them I do say about me building the polytunnel. If you go back that far, you can go right through. I'm just going to say this um, is such a long video that it's going to get split. In, it's only got five minutes left. Um, it's going to be five minutes and then it'll be the next bit of the video. So the, bit, the video will be in two parts. Um, if you can please bear with me to watch all of it. It really does make sense. I've got to get this out here because um, nothing's being done by the police, uh, the coroner's office or the hospital. And there's so many mistakes and so much is wrong with this. I didn't know about anything until 2020 when I ordered the hospital records. Um, I'd never seen the hospital records before 2020. And I only ordered them because of the fact that I found a dodgy document that had the wrong dates on it. Um, um, my friend who's the site manager, she spoke to me uh, in 2020 and it wasn't until then that she she said, um, I said to her, you know, um, did I message you on the 28th? And she said, no, you messaged me on the 24th. And it was the 24th that my mum died. I remember speaking to her in the hospital and um, she sent me the message on Facebook Messenger. So that's what encouraged me to get the hospital records. So I'm just making my points. Yeah me building a polyton if anyone wants to know those sort of things uh there's my van my old van um in the picture as well um because i was there doing that it wasn't the day that my mum died on the day that my mum died my friend who's the site manager sent me this message to say how sorry she was to see me so upset in the hospital see sorry to see you so upset earlier i mean surgery and ortho tomorrow I didn't ring her back again or message her back and she didn't message me until the 30th but um, that was the day that my mum died and she saw me so upset in the hospital 24th of May 2018 the day that my mum died and this is the message she sent me I saw her at 4.15 when my mum died I didn't see her at 4.15 I saw her at 4 4.30, 4.40 as I was leaving the room where my mum's dead body was um, and then she wrote to me on Facebook Messenger to say how sorry she was to see me upset in the hospital. This is the mortuary witness statement. It, on it, it says the 24th of May 2018, the day that I said goodbye to my mum. The whole thing looks like it's written by one person, um, the person who signed it. Look at the arse. Uh, she's also the person that wrote the letter to the GP office, um, GP surgery, that says the 23rd on it. She wrote the 23rd on the letter to the GP surgery and then she wrote the 24th on the mortuary witness statement, which was the day that I say goodbye to my mum and the day that um, the site manager sent me the message and spoke to me in the hospital the day that my mum died. This is the hospital attendance sheet. Um, the first day that my mum was admitted, her first appointment and everything, um, it says here deceased and all that, but the first one was the the 14th of the 1st, 07, and the 15th of the 1st, 07. But it's got the 20, 22nd of the 1st, 07. There's no 14th or 15th of the 1st, 07. There is a 14th and a 15th. There's a, sorry, there's not a 14th and a 15th. There's a 14th of the 5th, uh, 2018, and 28th of the 5th, 2018. And it says that, Mrs., uh, that my mum died. Um, but there's no 14th and 15th of the 1st 07 at all in this, at all. My mum had a gynaecology problem that started in 2016, uh, but she didn't have one beforehand. But here it says, husband reports that she had it for 35 years. She didn't. She had it from 2016. There's no mention of it in the GP records at all, and it doesn't start until 2016. As I said before, the typed letter that's in the GP records, there's got a lot of things wrong in it because of the fact that the rest of the GP records don't say any of the things in there. This is a, a handwritten one, 
Um, the writing is quite similar to the the letter that I just showed you about the the gyno one. Um, this one says that um, the husband was Patricia's full-time carer for five years, uh, declining cognitive function for 12 years, uh, but significantly in the last five years. Again, this is just nonsense. Um, she needs, it says at home, Pat needs assistance to wash, dress, can independently mobilise about the house, but needs guiding room to room. She used to go to Keep Fit every Monday. She was supposed to have gone to Keep Fit on the day that she um, apparently fell. Uh, eyesight last tested two years ago, which had been 2016. Um, she could never find her glasses from 2016 onwards. That's kind of weird, isn't it? She used to wear glasses to read. Um, has noticed that Pat finds it hard to um, to find the, a spoon in a bowl or eat food off a plate. Now, my mum could, she could quite easily find the spoon in the bowl and she didn't need to be fed. She used to eat loads of things. She'd eat everything herself. The problem was with her diet was that she was only being fed the same things, which was tomato soup for lunch and um, two tomatoes cut into quarters two hard-boiled eggs cut in half and two pieces of ham rolled up. That was her whole diet for the last six months. And every time I asked, she said, I got told that that's all she'll eat. And yet when I was looking after her and there was no one else there, she'd have ice cream and she'd have loads of things. We'd have toast and all sorts of things. She never minded what she ate. And she looked very hungry all of the time. I've got pictures of her at Christmas eating Christmas dinner. Mad, mad. Um, she um, she could run up and down the stairs as well, but it does say here, um, change of textures, uh, e.g. function difficulty to see or judge the next step. Absolute crap. Just a load of nonsense. Um, tep decision does not believe resuscitation is in Pat's best interest. There was nothing wrong with her. It's just nonsense. Someone's telling big fibs. And this is just nonsense, and it's just awful to read for me. Let's do a summary, all right? The summary is that a lot of what the husband said is crap, and that my mum... All right, this will be part... Well, it'll either be part two, or um, hopefully it'll go on to the same video, but it might be part two. Okay, here we go. This is the other bit of it didn't have dementia for 12 years the letter that's in the gp records is to back up this and it's been retyped because again it, it doesn't say any of this in the gp records my mum never smoked anything like that there's another one that says like this written handwritten that says she smoked um she was a heavy smoker quitted a while back which goes with the letter again absolute nonsense it's all nonsense so yeah summary sorry my mum died on the 24th of May 2018. I was there and I saw her and spoke to her. I, I spoke to her. I said my goodbyes to my mum. When I saw her, she was stiff as a board. Rigor mortis had definitely sp uh, set in. She looked angry. She looked really pissed off. She really did. Um, her hands were clawed. She just looked so angry and so annoyed and just pissed off. She, and I was as well because I'd just lost my mum. She died on the 24th of May. Or I saw her dead on the 24th. The hospital, the um, GP records, the coroner's letter to the GP says that she died on the 23rd. I saw her dead on the 24th. The mortuary witness statement says the 24th. Um, all the hospital records that are on the days that she wasn't in there, the dates look like they've been altered or it's been rewritten. There's 23 altered dates in the hospital records. Uh, that are clearly altered and there's 29 that are altogether so there's another six that aren't quite so clear to read um, there's all this paperwork that says different things that contradicts the hospital records um, the mortuary witness statement says 24th on it there's a letter from the gp um, sorry there's a letter from the hospital when i wrote to them to say why are all the dates changed and all that sort of thing and in that letter it says that they couldn't find any altered or changed dates all the bits of paper that are on days that my mum wasn't in the hospital are on really old paperwork from 2006 
um, 2011 to 2014, 2014 to 2016. They're all on out-of-date paperwork on the pages that she wasn't there. Uh, and the dates are all changed, and there's loads of them. Um, all the x-rays have got my mum's date of birth right, but her age wrong for 2018. Um, the CT scans have got her age right and her date of birth right, but the, the x-rays have got the, the date of birth right and the age wrong. Again, this is the letter to the coroner's office, um, and it says here, her husband and myself first noted it memory impairment in 2016. However, at this point, she ref refused referral to memory clinic. But eventually, in the summer of 2016, she was assessed and diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease on the 24th of June, 2016. Um, the doctor was my mum's doctor since 2007. Um, my mum fell and fractured her right wrist on the 14th of the 1st, 2007. Um, she had a, a x-rays done on the 15th and she had a, a cast done on the 15th. It says here that mum went in on the 14th of May 2018 and then there's bits in the paper in the hospital records that says that she had the x-rays on the 15th of May 2018, the ones that are dodgy x-rays that have got the date of birth right and the age wrong. Um, this is just a, a summary of the whole thing. It's weird that the 14th and the 15th are not mentioned in the attendance sheets in the hospital records as I've shown you but the 14th and the 15th of May 2018 are. Now I think that all of the hospital records and all of the GP records and everything to do with my mum going into the hospital in 2018 have been fabricated. The handwriting of the doctor who recommended that mum should have an operation on a day that she wasn't there looks like it's written by one of my family members. The um, hospital records that are written by the mortuary doctor, whose name's on the mortuary witness statement, but is also in the hospital records on days after my mum died, so on the 25th, 26th, 27th and 28th, um, his handwriting looks like my uh, looks like the husband's handwriting and all of the the records that are the um the nurses and the um, carers look like it's a female um, family member's handwriting um, all of the gp records and a lot of the um, hospital records are typed last typed on the 24th of june 2020 and the um, the three ladies that turned up in the APSA NHS car turned up on the 24th of June 2021 for an anniversary party uh, with the three people or with two of the three people that I believe fabricated all the hospital records. And I find that extremely suspicious, extremely suspicious. The, uh, the doctor, as it says here, didn't, and the husband didn't notice memory impairment until 2016. There's records in the records that say that she had it since 2014, but she she ran into the glass door in 2014. And I believe that that was probably a setup because the door had never been shut before. And the following day, it was like they'd already got a sticker for the door. It was a glass door and it didn't have a sticker on. I bet the sticker's still there. But it was weird that they didn't go out and buy it. They already had one in the drawer. So to me, that would be a, a setup as well. I'm not allowed to report it to the police because it's already gone through the coroner's office and the coroner concluded that my mum died on a different day to the day that she died. The coroner's office, the lady from the coroner's office whose name is on the mortuary witness statement and is on that letter saying that my mum died on the 23rd. It's mad, isn't it? Like... What would you do? This is my mum. My mum died for no apparent reason and she told me that she'd hurt her ankle or shin and she was driven to the hospital. And then she died in three days, if you go by what the mortuary, um, the lady who works for the mortuary says, and four days, if you go with what I say, uh, the site manager says, and the hospital records, the GP, the GP uh, patient summary was sent on the 24th, the day that I saw my mum dead. My mum died on the 24th. This was a setup. Decide for yourself.
do you think that the, the hospital records and all of it is dodgy then just say make a comment nobody is making a comment but you should make a comment because this is out of order i think i'm not allowed to report and i've tried to report the same thing 31 times the last time on the 22nd of december 2020 uh, sorry the last time on the 1st of december 2022 on the 12th of december 2022 i was hacked and on the 27th of february 2023 i was hacked again but i believe that the people that were sitting in the car park that the photos are on here the people that were sat in the car park were listening to my conversation because when i hung up the phone one of the ladies got out of the car and she walked off and i took a photo of her the car then drove off the car was driven by a tall blonde or a blonde lady i couldn't see how tall she was because she was driving and she was sitting in the car but she was a blonde lady and i've seen her before um the people that sit outside my house I've seen a car that's on here as well um, that ends TWZ and it was a police officer that was in the car and he was the first officer that I reported it to the first time in June of 2020. He was the first officer that I reported it to. He was in his police car down the road through the whole of 2020 when that silver golf was in the car park. Um, I believe this is all connected and this is an all a setup and they're covering it up. You know, if, if the police and the coroner's court and, I don't know, if everybody wants to take me to court to, to discuss this, then perhaps we could go to court and discuss this because I really would like to know why there are so many discrepancies in the hospital records and all of the records, all of them. Because I'd like to know. And I'd like to know why it looks like uh, my family members wrote and fabricated the hospital records and why they had anniversary party or why people had anniversary parties with people that turned up in an APSA and NHS car uh, a, a year after the exactly to the day, a year after to the day when the hospital and the GP records were last typed. I want to know what the answers to all of these things are. I think it's absolutely disgusting. And I think it was for greed and money. Um, I know that my mum couldn't write in 2017. Uh, and yet the, the, the doctor said that she didn't know whether she could write because she'd never seen anything written down by her. And yet there's that letter in the GP records that says that my mum, or it just suggests that she could write because it's signed by my mum. Why would this person lie to me? It's just it's crazy stuff. The coroner wrote down the day that my mum died wrong. He put down that mum died on the 28th and my mum died on the 23rd. It says in the, in the coroner's, from the coroner's office that my mum died on the 24th, 3rd. The uh, patient summary was sent on the 24th. I saw her dead on the 24th. Um, mum died on the 24th of May 2018. And everything has been written and fabricated and everything's been covered up. The will that was put through in 2017 is fake as well because my mum couldn't write in 2017. The letter that the in the doctors in the GP records is from 2011 when she could write. Um, my mum didn't have anything wrong with her until 2014 when she ran into the glass door. Uh, her dementia was caused by a metal artifact due to dental work, it says, but I believe that's to, due to her, my mum running into a glass door, which I also think was a setup. I believe that all of this is to do with money and greed. My mum was a very wealthy woman before she died. In 2015, we were all asked to sign last and power of attorney. As soon as we signed it, all my mum's shares and everything in her business were re-registered into someone else's name signed into someone else's name the the property and the um, shares in the in the business they were all signed into someone else's name from 2015 2016 2017 2018 all my mum's money and assets they were all signed into someone else's name as well uh, all of her properties were re-registered into that person's name as well i have evidence of all of this stuff as well um, but because i haven't got anyone to reward it to this is where I'm at and I'm reporting it to everyone. And you, you, you guys in the world, you make up your own minds. I'm just showing you the evidence. If you wonder why I sound cross, I'm bloody cross. 
that my mum, I believe that my mum was murdered. I really do. I believe she was murdered in 2018 for her estate. Make up your own mind. I just want to point out a couple more things. Um, all the records, 2004 to 2016, um, say that the uh, staff members are unknown staff members or the staff members are um, consultants or third party consultants who are actually um, secretaries and receptionists. Um, the records 2016 onwards till 2018, the staff members are named. Um, in January 2020, when I found out about all this, the when I found the um, coroner's witness statement and I confronted someone, a family member, he said I didn't do anything wrong, all I did was write the, the records. I didn't do anything wrong, all I did was sign the records. That's what he told me. He implied that um, his partner and uh, uh, her, my mum's husband did do something to my mum that caused her death in 2018. I just want to put those things in. And some people have been kind enough to make um, comments on it, um, and other people haven't. But like I say, if you go through all the records that I put on here, and you decide for yourselves, and if you want to comment, then you should. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Thank you.